Hey everybody, welcome back to Backlog Banter. I'm your boy Abram, joined as usual by Tucker Hazel, and we are here to talk about what a series that's very close to both of our hearts, and that is Pokemon. But before we get any further, if you want to talk to us about Pokemon, don't go to the comments section, go to our Discord. The link is always right in the description. Well, and you can go to the comments section. I don't want them to. I, re I respond to comments. That's fair, but would you rather be talking to Tucker or talking to me? You know, just... Uh, sure. You know what? Discord. And if you're down there anyway, the subscription button could use a little bit of a poke, you know? You make it real happy. Make it, you, you make its whole day if you just give mm -hmm. it a little bit of a touch. Yeah. But Tucker, we are on the precipice of the Post Malone Pokemon concert. Oh, Christ. When is that? Is that on the 27th? I don't know. But... I but did. But being on the precipice of that clusterfuck means we're on the precipice of another more important event, which is the announcement of whatever is next for the Pokemon series and presumably yep. whatever game is coming out this year in 2021. Probably Diamond Pearl Remix. I mm -hmm. want to let's go Sinnoh. Come talk to me on the Discord about that. In the meantime, though, Tucker, before we start looking forward, which we have done already, link, yep. in, in, link in the card in the corner of the video, whatever the fuck, to our Pokemon predictions video. We've already looked forward, Tucker. Let's look back. On not, what, not too much. Look, look, look a little bit. Back a little bit on what I would say is the most controversial set of Pokemon games of all time. Mm -hmm. I was going to come up with a joke, but I didn't have one. We're talking about Sword <laughs> and Shield. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are talking about Sword and Shield. This is, so this is the great Gallo debate. Yes, I this... just stole your fucking thunder. I yeah. saw your hands go up and I grabbed the thunder away from you. Like Wonder Woman in Wonder Woman 1984, you you uh, lassoed on card in the corner. <laughs> to our fucking review of that. Um, no, but so we are going to talk about Sword and Shield today. You yes. and I are coming at this from a very interesting perspective because we have known each other through the launch and and hype and announcement of Sword and Shield. Yes. We've been discussing the games and Pokemon series as a whole that entire time. Yes. Our hype levels, interest levels, uh, enjoyment levels of the game have changed as it has progressed. You have played the DLC. I have not. Um, and we're just going to be talking about how the game shakes out for us in yes. comparison to, to the rest of the series. Tucker, here's what I want to start with. Mm -hmm. I think there are two Pokemon Sword and Shields. And I feel, like, I feel like this is the case with a lot of popular and controversial games. There sure. is the cultural enigma Pokemon Sword and Shield, mm -hmm. which is discussed in fucking Still Battle About Online. Mm -hmm. And the actual game on the cartridge, Pokemon Sword and Shield. And, sure. and, I, and I feel like the conversation around these games has taken on such a life of its own that the actual content of the games itself is no longer important to most people. Mm -hmm. It's fucking bring back national decks, get rid of the national decks, kill your mom, don't kill my mom, whatever. It just turns, it, it really, some of the most nasty discussion I've ever heard. Oh, yeah. In, in the, a, the, I had to unsubscribe from the, or unfollow the, r slash pokemon subreddit which i've yes. never unfollowed a subreddit for because it, it devolved into absolute mayhem and and bullshittery and it was really sad to see because usually r slash pokemon people post in fan art people post in like tattoos they got things like that um but no then pokemon sword and shield happened and, and uh and then it's all about killing yeah. family members yeah for 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 wanting oshawa in a pokemon game so I don't, I don't really, I honestly don't want to talk about the, the fucking controversies at all, except Not necessary. for in the context of the, of the game itself. Mm -hmm. um, I was very critical of Sword and Shield before the game launched. Mm -hmm. I got it on launch day. I enjoyed it. I never beat it. I came back a couple months later in early 2020. Um, and I played it pretty substantially. Um, probably around January to beat the game, did some post-game stuff, put it down for a while, came back again for another substantial chunk of time, then came back twice more um, around both the DLC drops. Sure. And right now, I really enjoy Pokemon Sword and Shield. So from, for, we're just going to present our, our histories here so we can you know have that as a backdrop. Yeah. Um, I remember being... Honestly, I think Sword and Shield was the most excited I've ever been. For a video game which you know maybe i didn't set my expectations properly but from everything that they were showing before launch the national removal of the national next doesn't really bother me to this day didn't yeah. at the time um didn't really care about the trees that everyone was arguing about things yes. like that everything that they were showing me with the game looked like exactly how i wanted the series to go forward so i was 
following every detail. I was watching every video. I was on forums discussing it. Just hyped as all hell. Yes. I got the game on launch day. I remember sitting in a GameStop with my friends waiting outside to get my copy. People playing Melee. It was great. I, I get that home. We put it up on the TV. And for the first five or six hours, a couple first day, first few days of Pokemon Sword and Shield, I was in love with it. I yeah. They, they held back so much information about the game, early parts of the game. There were so many Pokemon where you walk into the grass. You're like, I've literally never seen that before. And it's right over there and I can go touch it. It was, yeah. it was magical. And I, and I was, I loved it. I played through the game. I beat it over time. I started realizing that there were cracks in, in what my, I, my expectations were cracks in the design philosophy of the game. And when I beat it, I was like, this was fun. There are definitely things I really enjoy about it. There are definitely things that I, I really think could be fixed um, and are pretty objective flaws, in my opinion. But over time, since since I've beaten it, I didn't play the DLCs because yeah. I, I didn't really have interest in going back to them. Um, I have completed the, the Pokedex, the regional deck, so all 300 Pokemon or whatever, um, or, you know, of the base game before the DLC came out. Yeah. But my opinion on the game has decreased over time as I've more and more thought about the flaws of the game than, than the highs. Because I think a lot of the highs of the game are more in-the-moment things sure. that didn't really stick with me. So that's where I'm coming at this from. The biggest problem, in my opinion, with Sword and Shield is that they feel rushed and they feel cheap. Yes, 100%. Um, which is really disappointing. Because mm -hmm. Pokemon is was often derided, very fairly so, for being very iterative and being very similar, but in a way that a lot of other annualized and quasi-annualized franchises are, they maintained a very high level of quality. Mm -hmm. Even if Pokemon was becoming samey in the 3DS era, it was they were very high quality games each time. Yeah. Sword and Shield did not feel high quality No, in a, in a lot of respects. I, I don't think it's fair to talk about these games without talking about the fact that i think they are ugly and mm -hmm. and graphics don't make a game for me they don't break a game for me but in the context of what other developers are doing with much more ambitious games on the hardware yep it's embarrassing frankly mm -hmm. and what what i think is even worse are some of the flourishes like i'll never fucking forget some of those cutscenes where you're in a stadium and like rose will start talking and there's no voice acting and yeah. no music. He was just mm -hmm. gesticulating and there is slow moving text. And I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Yeah. And I, and I feel like this level of, of rushed development, this feeling of cheapness pervades the entire experience. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my flaws with the game, I got some that are more design philosophy based, but a lot of my flaws with the game are come down to the execution opposed to the game's ideas. And I think that's probably most disappointing about the games entirely. Yeah, so I, and I think I think we're honestly coming in from a really similar perspective because yeah. both you and I do think they're good games. I think the crux of our argument here, it's not, it's not really a debate between you and me, it's us presenting our case to be debated with, is that these, while they have their issues, are the most ambitious Pokemon games yes. and, and a great way for the series to move into the, into the future. Um, but I do agree with you uh, on the rushed and cheap aspects of the game. Over time, the more I think about the game, the flaws that I'm thinking about are the fact that the wild area, while cool at first, is just it's just empty. It's just boring. It's not fun to traverse. Yeah. The areas are not diverse enough. Um, while it's fun to catch Pokemon in the overworld and to see them, you know, sort of existing there, it, it really it doesn't change. It doesn't do what it should for a large open area like that. No. And unfortunately, I think that the focus being on the wild area there means that the rest of the game around it, the towns and the roots are the weakest they've ever been in the Pokemon series. The roots are really short. They're not very interesting. Um, there are a couple that have some visual flares, but even then if the focus is on the visual flare rather mm -hmm. than there actually being a lot of Pokemon or, or areas to explore, things like that. And the towns, I think are by far the worst they've been in the series. Usually there's two or three buildings you can enter and most of them don't have anything in them. They look cool, but they're just cordoned off into these really small areas that are very unfortunate. I mean, you get to a, a giant London-like city at the end and you can enter apartments, but they don't have anything in them. And other than that, it's just like roads. 
And, yes. and it's, it's very, it, it, that, that is in my, in my mind, what really shows the problem with this game's rush development. So yeah. Th- and that's what I think about most when I think about the yeah. game is like, man, it was so unfortunate that these, these towns, I love towns, Pokemon, Ta- Pokemon town Absolutely. music, root music, some of the most consistently high quality and memorable music and, and locales in, in video games from my perspective. And unfortunately, Sword and Shield just lacked that. So that yeah. was a large blow to the game for me. I think the wild area is worth drilling into because for sure. me, the wild area is basically emblematic of everything that I love about this game and everything that's so disappointing. 100%. This is a direction Pokemon needs to move. And mm-hmm. the, 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 the expansion pass content is, is night and day over the wild area. And, and, it, and it executes on what the wild area should have been. Because sure. you will go from the top of this hill where it might be a little bit of foggy. This is a very specific spot. It's a little bit foggy. You ride down a little incline and you go left into a desert. Yeah. And it's a fucking sandstorm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you go a little bit further and it's a fucking rainstorm and there's lakes everywhere. Mm-hmm. There, is an, there is no sense of place or geography, yep. <laughs> or anything at all. Yeah, and it's it's really interesting because even then they they miss the opportunity to do even like s- different areas on top of that. I mean, yeah. there's not a snow area of the of the wild area. There's two snow routes up above the wild area, but that's the only place you can catch ice Pokemon. Like, yeah. or it might snow occasionally in some areas in the wild area. I, I can't even remember. But I remember finding that odd that the game based around this large sort of L-shaped area, um, it is it is really not very complex. It's kind of just no. this long, weird thing. Um, is is so mishmashed and stitched together which with the areas in which you can catch different Pokemon, there's really only one desert area. And aside from yeah. that, it's kind of just different kinds of grass areas that you can go through. And then the one kind of thing that could set it apart or feel like a new area to explore, an ice area, is completely separate off to like two very short cold routes up in the sure. north. And, and I just remember, like that's a w- weird complaint, but I really think it's emblematic of the fact that this, it is, like you said, not not complete in that area yeah and and so and so that's the negative side and for me the story of sword and shield are the potent is the potential that it has and the ways that it does progress the series forward um in ways that engage me so yeah. i i think that having overworld pokemon in this context is really great because yes, while it, it's it is very cool in let's go at a certain point, there's like fucking Pokemon hopping out of the grass left and right, and they've got like like sparkles around them, and they're like clipping yeah. into each other's bodies. And here in Sword and Shield, actually, it feels pretty organic the way that Pokemon will come out of the grass, and the ways yeah. that you you still have some random encounters if you want them. I I think that that's that's a smart way to move the series forward. I I, I, I actually really like the ideas of camp, Pokemon camp, and cooking. I love Pokemon camp. I, I think love it, Pokemon camp. I think it's my favorite yeah. part of the game because. People say that, you know, the animations, which the battle animations are weak and they are very reused and, and there's not a lot of additional flair there. But I'm willing to concede that for the charm and, and interactivity that Pokemon Camp allows. I mean, yeah. I have so many fond memories of just sitting there, putting different Pokemon in and seeing how they interact, see how they, seeing how they do different kinds of animations. It really uh, gave a lot of Pokemon a new depth in my, from my perspective. Um, that they didn't have before. Of course, there are some that clearly aren't intended to be in Pokemon Camp. They kind of just pff, sit there, and you're like, "Well, mm, that's unfortunate." But the ones where they clearly did add a lot of of unique animation and personality to them, um, the fossil Pokemon being one that stands out in my mind is people hate those fucking Pokemon. But when you put them in the Pokemon Camp, they lumber around uniquely, and they they do interesting moves, to, like pick up the ball and and do all sorts of things like that, and and it gives them a lot of charm that I think makes those somewhat relatively weak character designs have personality and, and be redeemable. So Pokemon Camp is is something I will always praise these games for. Yeah, I, I think a, a lot of the success of Sword and Shield for me is the way that like you're just talking about like with the overworld Pokemon, how they start to make this series feel pretty alive, mm-hmm. w- which is strange for a game that feels so flat in other respects. Um, but, but I think that's worth commending. Another thing that I think is worth commending are the raid battles. Sure. I think raids are a lot of fun 
but they became pretty archetypical. And then they got yeah. really great in Crown Tundra. And I, I want to I want to talk about the expansions specifically and pointedly in, in a minute or two. Sure. But when I when I just look at ideas like raids in Pokemon Camp and the wild area for what it is, because I did have mm. fun being in there and seeing Pokemon pop up and and ringing my my bike bell and sure. watching them throw their arms in the air and try to chase me or, or or stuff like things moments like that are emergent and fun as longtime Pokemon fans. Yeah, I think there's a lot of heart in these games, and the, and there's a and it's it paints such a clear picture of where Pokemon is going. Mm -hmm. And if this is a step we have to take, that's fine because I want to be where we're headed. I sure. I, I really love a lot of the ideas this game puts forward, yeah. and I really reject a lot of the criticism about this game being lacking in 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 respects to content or in respects to various things because I just don't think that's fair. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think losing the national decks was more of an optical issue than a gameplay issue. Of course. Because, I mean, I, I missed, sure, I missed Torterra, my first starter Pokemon ever. A Turtwig. Turtwig. Raised, raised him up to my boy Torterra. I miss him. But it's an optical issue. This isn't even the first time it's happened in the series. This happened mm -hmm. in Gen 3. Like, so that doesn't excuse it because it's not 2003 anymore, right? Mm -hmm. But but that didn't hinder those games. It didn't hinder this one because having all the Pokemon, I don't think, is necessarily essential to to the Pokemon experience. I I think a lot of the a lot of the hate towards this game is unjustified. I agree. A lot of it is, and and, yeah. and I I just I think that there is so much noise around Sword and Shield that it, it becomes disappointing. And I will say, for my tastes. I like the progression of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that from Gen 5 to Gen 7, Pokemon stories, and this, this, is, this is where we diverge the wildest in terms of Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I think the stories are fucking awful. I think they're overwrought and uninteresting and they annoy me, especially Gen 7, which I know we really disagree on. So, and I know I see, I see a little smile on your face. And I'll, I, and I'll I, make it wider. I'll make it wider. And I totally understand the appeal of the story. But sure. for me, while I like I, I see the appeal of the more anime storyline of the here, we're gonna have this kind of grandiose quest. My Pokemon adventure for me is mine. It's it's about getting the badges, it's about meeting the mm -hmm. Pokemon. So the fact that we we're able to foreground that a little bit more was exciting. And you get, I think, a really compelling cast of characters. Hop is great. People mm -hmm. who don't like I Hop agree. are dumb. Hop is fantastic. There's a lot of great characters here. I think there are some fun moments in the narrative. I like the idea of Team Yell. They're ridiculous, but I like the idea of them. They're not executed well in gameplay. No. Actually, they're yes, executed the worst of any uh, evil team. Evil, quote-unquote, evil team. There's like three character models. They're at least more memorable, like than like, they're more memorable than like Team Flair, I'd say. Yeah, I, I think I, I would say to to defend Team Flare, which I don't have a huge affinity for Team Flare, but I think Lysander does so much to bump That's that fair. team up, and also just the the poses that they do and things like that. Team Yellow has like maybe three animations, and I and I found that a little bit st static and generic. Sure. After I got used to it, which was like Modestoke, which is the first city in the game. <laughs> so, so like I was saying, I, I do think these games have a lot of positives, even if they're kind of mired by a series of unfortunate issues yeah so from from my perspective I, and i was i was holding this under my belt because i have to put it out there is i'm i'm the crazy motherfucker that does enjoy pokemon stories um i yeah. think that this game does the journey of getting the badges the best in the series i yeah. think the grandiose scale of having it be an event that people go and watch yes the the elite four being shaped differently because it's all the people you fought before trying to funnel to being the champion all great and, yeah. and actually does play out well in execution unfortunately i think the focus on that means that the rest of it feels a little empty you Absolutely. don't you don't feel like you're really making any sort of particular progression because th there isn't really even an evil team to stop like there's like a twist evil guy there and, and, and it feels really forced and there's like a weird story uh, explanation like Two thirds of the way through, they're like, "Okay, all right," but I think that the lack of story yeah. means that we don't get 
much out of these characters who I do think are so strong. I think that Marnie and Bede and Hop are, are some of the best rivals in the series. I think yes. the some of the gym leaders, I think, are really fantastic. And I think they could have had a larger role. But because the story is so backhanded or put in the background compared yeah. to compared to uh, the gym challenge. Totally. It, it, it doesn't give those characters any time to shine. The reason I do enjoy the story of Gen 7 so much, regardless of how over the top and anime it is, is I think that it makes the characters in it more memorable. It sure. gives the kahunas more of a role in the world. It gives the gym leaders a little bit more context. It lets you connect a little more to, to Gladion and Lily and all of those characters. And it makes the the celebration at the end of Gen 7 feel like you've met all these people and you've gone through things with them. When there's a celebration at the end of Sword and Shield, like, oh yeah, I saw that guy once. And and he like, you know, gave me an item. Like he yes. walked up on the street, he's like, I'm the gym leader, here, have this. And, and while I like the characters in Sword and Shield, I think that the lack of story is is a greater detriment than it is, even though it is, it might be for you something that you don't necessarily want i think that it could lead to a larger scale sure. more modern and cohesive engaging experience if if they were to have put more emphasis on the story you didn't like when like fucking hamburger and hot dogs so legendary oh yeah the this the sword burton shield bird is that their names yeah holy fuck i just remember so, their something hair. like that Hold their on. hair is shaped yeah, like that was swords a, and shields yeah, that's so weird <laughs> God, that was so weird. <laughs> I liked I liked the battling with the legendaries against Eternatus. That yeah, was that fun. fun. That was unique. That was clever. But it wasn't led up to in any way. So like it just felt like, oh, okay, I guess we're doing this now. And that's kind of what that whole end of section of the game is, is you're doing yeah. your whole journey, you're doing a bunch of stuff, and then they just they just there's like a wall there, and they just you do you do a bunch of stuff, the evil team comes in, the legendary show up, you're doing the leap four, you're doing the champions. Like, yes. Whoa, oh, okay, all right, oh, it's all flying at me. And uh I think I think it has a pacing issue in that regard. There's definitely a pacing issue when they're like, let's just go and do Dynamax battles in literally every gym stadium for the events. Mm-hmm. And I just <laughs> turn my brain off. Yeah. With each one. I'm like, all right. Um can I talk about the expansion content for a minute? Yes, go ahead. Crown Tundra is some of the best Pokemon in the modern era, period. Sure. It has an actual story with interesting characters and the legendary Pokemon, like, possessing people. There, there are interesting concepts there, interesting lore elements there. There are towns you can explore with a free camera because it's all set in a wild area that feels organic. That's the thing I most am intrigued by any part of the expansion pass you yeah there's this little there's this little there's this little town that used to be a huge tourist attraction and then this legendary pokemon started wreaking havoc so the crops were wilting so there's this there's this group of like rural older people who all have interesting things to tell the player about like the history of their town and they're Mm -hmm. like harvesting vegetables and you can go into their houses and meet them and get items from them and everything there's interesting post-game content the raids have been retooled to be a lot more fair it's not here's a fucking expanding fucking shield segment every time you take out a fourth of the health everything basically everything that's around the base game is absolved in in especially crowd tundra yeah um isle of armor is a lot weaker it's got a very interesting location to explore but it has some of the most blatant uh padding i've ever seen in my entire life you, you sure. get you get a level 10 cub foo mm-hmm. and they say you can't go in here and i'm not kidding until it's level 70. so you have to grind this motherfucker from 10 to 70 before you can beat that expansion which is fucking ridiculous but on the whole and especially in crown tundra it's so good it's mm-hmm. just really good which which for me is the reason why I'm very optimistic going into Gen 9. Sure. Because Pokemon is iterative. They're mm-hmm. such an iterative... Game Freak is fucking iterative. I, so, I agree. So everything that was in Gen 8 is going to be in Gen 9, but it's going to be so much better. Yeah. It's, we're going to have an entire game that is at least on the quality of Crown Tundra. Mm-hmm. And most likely way above it. 
because sure. we're going to have an actual development cycle and a, and a foundation to build off and make it look like a game that should be on the switch yes with the presentation the fidelity we need the gameplay we deserve it's gonna be great i'm really genuinely very excited for probably next year when we get gen 9 yeah and, and i think that's i mean i don't know how much more you have to say but i think that's kind of where i want to end it on a high Which, note is that sword and shield has its issues and have slowly crept down my list of where i how i rank the pokemon games because of those flaws yeah not because of the things that it does so right for the series and i think the i would rather while i complain about the, the um wild area i would rather have the wild area to move us forward because it's interesting yeah. than not at all so why well, so while i do have issues with it i'm happy that it exists um and and i think that's sort of my philosophy on sword and shield overall is it's a pokemon game and i think it's a solid game because of that it's weaker in comparison to some of the other games because it doesn't have the production value that that was so consistent through throughout the series. And it does have that cheap aspect that we were talking about earlier, but it does mean that the ideas that it presents could be fleshed out really easily, to be honest. Very easily. Uh, which is why we, you and I are so optimistic and excited for the next generation of Pokemon yes. when it does come out. Game Freak will have had more time to get used to using hardware, to designing open worlds, to adding new mechanics that do push the series forward. And I think there could be something in Gen 9 that that makes it feel like, okay, we're here. We've we've transcended past that awkward teen stage to to something really interesting. And I think we're going to get awkward teen plus one uh, when it comes to whatever comes this year, whether that be uh, a Let's Go Sinnoh, Let's Go Johto, whatever, Pokemon Diamond Pearl remakes, that mix let's go and sword and shield and something else to to try and create an experience to you know cash cow us into buying another pokemon game every year yeah uh, but i'm i'm interested to see what those new ideas are how they evolve from let's go from sword and shield because clearly those were developed at the same time and, and didn't really take in too much inspiration from one another um but gen 9 is really where it's at and we're going to get there someday and i can't wait for it i can't wait for gen 9 this year's gonna be chaos. It doesn't fucking be. doesn't fucking matter which Pokemon game we get this year. It's gonna be chaos. And I'm kind of excited for it. Yeah. But I'm not really. You know? I mean, I mean, I want let me tell you something. Do you understand right. how, how angry people are gonna be if we get a let's go Sinnoh and how happy that would make me on a personal level? <laughs> Oh, no, I know. See, we've gonna been, be we've been discussing this for a while. We've been discussing it for a while. But we've been discussing this for a while, too. So I think it's a good place to leave it. Yep. We've, we've shared a shot with our share, 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 share Galler. Whew. We've said our thoughts about Galler. <laughs> Talk to us. Goodbye. <laughs>